Here's the thing. You may not know Rose Glass, but you should. Her debut feature film, Saint Maud, came out to rave reviews as a quiet yet disconcerting psychological horror film. So when her sophomore film was announced as part of the Sundance lineup this year, it instantly became one of the most anticipated films of the festival. Matt, what is your most anticipated film at Sundance? My number one is Love Lies Bleeding. It just looks incredible. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be so I already good. know this is going to be a five-star <laughs> movie on Letterboxd. Marty, your thoughts? I love the cast, but what really has got me is I saw St. Maud in theaters like two or three times. It just really, really spoke to me. She just had such a literally like home run, amazing job, amazing job with St. Maud. So, you know, I had to prioritize seeing it while I was in Park City. The film I'm talking about here is called Love Lies Bleeding, and with this being one of the more unique love stories of the year, I figured this would be an appropriate review to publish on Valentine's Day. It features steamy queer romance, shocking criminal family drama, and splashes of uncanny magical realism. But is all of this too much for one film? Like, was this too big of a swing for Rose Glass in her sophomore feature film? I'll explain my thoughts on that here in a little bit. In the film, Katie O'Brien plays an extremely muscular bodybuilder named Jackie, and I figured a film with this strong of a character should be paired with a strong whiskey. For that, I went with Old Forester 100 Proof. It's pretty strong, but should be easy enough to sip on without knocking me out before the end of this video. Well, should be. And since we're on the subject of queer stories in this episode, I have to shout out a publication you really should check out. Handbasket is a zine publication out of Ellensburg, Washington, where queer people share their voices through essays, poetry, art, and a lot more. And what's really cool about this is it's entirely free. If you're in Seattle, you can pick up hard copies of Handbasket at Charlie's Queer Books in Fremont and Left Bank Books Collective in Pike Place Market. And if you're not in Seattle, you can easily get a digital copy online. I am leaving links in the description so that you can go find that archive. And if you happen to check out the most recent issue, you'll find a little profile on me and a handful of other awesome LGBTQ individuals. Check it out and support the diverse stories and perspectives that Handbasket has to offer. All right, for now, let's get back to the story at hand. Today, I'm sipping on Old Forester and reviewing the film, Love Lies Bleeding. From director Rose Glass comes an electric new love story. Reclusive gym manager Lou falls hard for Jackie, an ambitious bodybuilder headed through town to Vegas in pursuit of her dream. But their love ignites violence, pulling them deep into the web of Lou's criminal family. What we have with Love Lies Bleeding is the assembly of all the right components to tell a compelling and truly unpredictable story. One of those components that makes this movie so impressive is the impeccably chosen cast, consisting of Dave Franco, Jenna Malone, Ed Harris, Katie O'Brien, and Kristen Stewart. Dave and Jenna play married couple JJ and Beth. Beth being a long-term victim of JJ's verbal and physical abuse. Kristen Stewart plays the gym manager Lou, sister to Beth and eventual love interest of Jackie. And Ed Harris plays Beth and Lou's father, Lou Sr. The crux in many ways of the conflicts in this story as his criminal behavior and background becomes enmeshed with Lou and Jackie's relationship. It is quite the story of family drama and with a wicked series of events and unexpected plot twists in play, you just never really know how this story is going to ultimately unfold. And that is what I really loved about this script. It just does such a great job navigating the tonal spectrum between tender moments and unhinged events while subverting expectations about what's supposed to happen in an unraveling family crime drama. Like, the connection between Lou and Jackie is captivating. Their escalating passion for each other is just infectious, and it's so easy to get invested into that blooming relationship. But there are definitely some shocking moments along the way sprinkled throughout the film, and they're used sparingly enough that when they happen, the sequences are extremely visceral. When it comes to the cast, Kristen Stewart is already an actor I am rooting for, and all of that goodwill just seamlessly transfers right over to her character, Lou, as I spend like the whole movie internally wanting things to work out in the best way for her. But among this truly exceptional ensemble cast, the showstopper in Love Lies Bleeding is the ferocious Katie O'Brien as Jackie. Those of us who attended Sundance last year might recognize similarities between Jackie and a character in last year's 
unfortunately infamous bodybuilding selection, Magazine Dreams. While that film's portrayal of an overly committed bodybuilder will struggle to reach audiences anytime soon, we're treated here in Love Lies Bleeding to the female version of that type of character, and Katie O'Brien absolutely nails this opportunity to show off acting prowess and incredible physicality. Especially in the wake of a film like The Iron Claw, which also relies on its ensemble to be well-versed in their acting capabilities and in full mastery of their hulking physique, I hope that more audiences can begin recognizing the talent that exists in actors willing to don these roles and make the physicality of acting much more prominent in what we look for in acting excellence. O'Brien is certainly an actor to pay attention to, and I can't wait for more people to see just how great she is in this film. But in addition to all of that, what Rose Glass is really great at in her films is making the audience question what's real for the narrative versus what's real for the characters. And this gives her films immense rewatchability, which is something that I take into consideration when I think about how much I enjoyed a film. That said, Glass's style of storytelling and filmmaking might not be for everyone. She's avid about injecting her films with this surrealism that I think really distinguishes her work. But this can be off-putting for some audiences, including here in Love Lies Bleeding. The vast majority of the film exists in a familiar and naturalistic world, but the glimmers of surrealism are evident throughout the film in Jackie's character. And although what her character does might seem minor and passive for the majority of the movie, the final act really doubles down on that weird nature of her character, and that could make or break final opinions people have of the film. If you've seen Saint Maud, what I'm pretty confident in saying is that Love Lies Bleeding has a lot more entertainment value. I was actually quite surprised at how much I laughed in the film, often thanks to Kristen Stewart's role and her interaction with other characters. So for me, magical realism and all, Rose Glass knocks this sophomore film out of the park. I think that she's really carving her own niche in this psychological drama thriller filmmaking scene, and I am 100% on board with it. There is so much to appreciate about Love Lies Bleeding, the film's cast, and the direction that Rose Glass is taking her filmmaking career. A24 has a winner on its hands with this one, and I can't wait for more audiences to experience it and hopefully love it as much as I do. Bourbon. That's another thing I love. Old Forester is a go-to for a lot of people, and while I have my own designated go-tos, this 100 proof is actually a really good bottle for something to sip on. When I drink it neat, there's a mild harshness to it, but still really sweet with just the right amount of oak flavor. Add a cube of ice and it really mellows out that harshness and just leaves really nice spice flavors. And at less than $40 for this bottle, it's a very approachable option, and in my opinion, a more preferable go-to bourbon than Old Forester's lower proofed bottle. Gotta love it. What can I say? Tell me your thoughts about Old Forester Bourbon, and mark your calendars for Love Lies Bleeding, hitting theaters in a month. Until then, don't forget to check out Handbasket Zine. Like I mentioned, links are in the description for how you can find it. And lastly, follow me on Letterboxd to see my rating for Love Lies Bleeding, and visit For Real to read more reviews from me and my awesome team of writers over at thisisforreal.com. This is Real Buzzed. Be wise, drink responsibly, and if you like this video and you want to see more, be sure to hit like and subscribe.